Let's start off a little bit easy. When you come over here, this unsuspecting guard, you melee him to the ground and grab the purple key card. This will be used to unlock the um, like office cubicles inside the hospital area for Pathfinder. And after you do this, you'll unlock an area that will give you a data pad for the code and a keypad, which is 1432. Once you unlock the doorway, this will be the area to allow you to get your suit and the cricket, which is essentially your magnum pistol. And then you can start sliding in the game and being able to shoot more people with just your assault rifle and the pistol itself. I do a little bit of a dance because I like the music of Solaco. So I wanted to show this off here. Once you go through the green door inside these locker areas, there'll be some med kits. It'll be your suit and there'll be an extra assault rifle there for some ammo. When you go to the main lobby of the Pathfinder Hospital, there's going to be this room that's green that has a med kit that you can pick up, a data pad, and a door to unlock. This is in the southern portion of the hospital on the very bottom of the map. Now I'll say this, it's going to be a little bit difficult to show you on the map where to go and where to like exactly be because there's a lot of lines and not really specific stuff. So I'll try and do as best I can with this walkthrough to show where you guys are. When you go through the green doors, there's going to be some stairs that lead downwards. And when you go down those stairs past a lobby area and then moving forward down, there'll be a frag grenade that the tutorial will tell you about including 50 gold. After you try and grab the frag grenade, there's another area to the Pathfinder Blue Hospital where it's essentially a front desk that has a lever. When you press that, it unlocks a door to the left-hand side that will produce a couple of guards for you to kill. A couple of engineers and a couple of soldiers you have to deal with. After you're done mopping up the place, there's another area that you have to go through this hallway and there's a green door that's blinking. Once you go through there, there's a ramp that goes up that will lead to an elevator that you have to cut the cables of. Here's the thing, when I first did this, I didn't know where the hell I was going for Wing B Floor 2. And on the left hand side after you kill these guys, there's a green doorway and it'll have an elevator. I did not know that when I went to go and step on it that I had to cut the wires in order to go down to a pool of water that has secret areas you can go to and being able to progress on through the mission. As you can see here, when you go over to the elevator on top of it, you can press the E button and that will cut the cables. After that, it'll explode and slowly put you underwater. Down in the water, there's about three health shards, I think. And then you have another area to where you can get some ammunition, a data pad, and that's inside a vent. Then you can progress on through the mission and get on to the next area. Not really sure what the data pad will hold, other than probably some lore or maybe something else, but I doubt it'd be a code since the only codes you really find are two of them. The first is opening up the weapons locker for your cricket and your suit, and the second one will be for when you get the shotgun. Continuing on to the Pathfinder Labs, this will be the area to where you find the keypad that allows you to unlock the shotgun, but you'll also be able to find a second key card on the far left side of the map. This will be the area that will allow you to get the key card, and it'll also have a data pad that you can pick up as well. After you pick up the data pad that gives you the code to unlock for the shotgun, that will be right next to a blue doorway. The code is 5478. And that'll stay, that'll never change unless they do like an update for it. You'll grab the data pad here, and you'll grab your new gun, which is the shotgun, which will be the gun that shreds everything and turns them into mincemeat when they get blown away by a single gunshot. After you grab the shotgun, you're going to have to deal with some guards that are coming at you. And like I said earlier, when it comes down to mincemeat, that's exactly what they look like when you blow them up with it. Now you're going to have to go up to the second floor of the Pathfinder Labs through a purple doorway, and this will be in the center of the map as you see here. After you go through that area, it'll be like a set of cubicles, and then it'll be a green door, I think, on the left-hand side to where there'll be a camera with a button that you have to press to unlock another door to where you can get out through the other side. Once you go through the doors that are currently down a hallway, then you'll be able to reach this cargo area, and you have to jump on top of a couple of boxes to reach the second level for the blue key card that will be next to some ammunition after you kill every single person there. Reason why for all the purple blood that you see all around me. I want to show roughly on the map where it is, so if you're looking for the blue key card and you're like wandering around but not seeing it, you have to get on top of boxes to be able to grab it there with some ammunition. And then after that, you'll have to deal with some enemies to kill. Now if you remember earlier when I showed you that security clearance card after I picked up the blue key card, well there's these areas that have these cracks on the walls and glasses, and you'll be able to take these propane tanks, or even the smaller ones that are kind of yellow, and you could use them to blow them stuff up. And when you do this, you're able to unlock new areas that you normally wouldn't be able to get to, getting weapon research stuff, or being able to get the clearance cards that you need to unlock the clearance doors, one all the way to five, or even higher. But what I did is I took this propane tank, and you could push it with your body weight. You don't need to use the pull 
but you could just move around by walking and pushing it up there. Once it's pushed far enough, you shoot it and it blows a hole in the wall, grabbing whatever you need inside, whether it be the clearance card, ammunition, or even a research for your weapon station. After you grab the security clearance card, there's going to be an office on the left-hand side of the map to where you have to go and find a code on a wall that's called 5432. And when you do this, you're able to unlock the keypad that's currently inside the room on a wall. And that will give you, I think, is a permanent 5 max HP health upgrade. And the code is 4532. So you grab this, and that'll give you a permanent health increase. On the southeastern side of the map, as you see in the bottom right-hand side, underneath where it has the storage cabinet, there's a clearance door. And when you unlock that, that will give you a weapons upgrade for your assault rifle, giving you 30 ammunition for your magazine size. So if you want to grab that, including a med kit, that will be there after you blow up the window that will allow you to grab the clearance one key card. So all the doors that are level one you could access, but anything that's two and three does not work, as you see on the map here. Using the blue key card that you got from the second floor of that cargo area, there will be a data pad, and on the left-hand side, going down some small stairs is some ammunition and a small room that you can unlock. This room will give you some cargo crates that you can smash open. It'll be some armor shards, ammunition, and some other things, as well as a module that you can't really do much with besides pick up and throw. When you're done smashing everything, you go up the stairs and disable the lockdown. After that, you'll hear Juggernaut say something, and then you have to go fight him in the staircase area of the Pathfinder Hospital. Once the lockdown has been disengaged, you'll have to follow Juggernaut that's currently smashing and blowing up everything that will open up a pathway over by these like locker rooms in the center of the map, and you have to go on the second floor in order to find this area. Continuing down the hallway, you'll go to this lobby area, and that's where you have to fight Juggernaut. He will not initiate when you first enter. He'll only do it when you get close enough to the exit where you're supposed to go and get out of the building, and he's not too difficult to deal with. You can spray him down with the assault rifle and get behind the wall here, and he'll try to shoot you the minigun. Because it's early access, sometimes he'll get stuck in the in-between staircases as you see underneath me. And that will be another way to kill him. But it's essentially just keep spraying him until he dies. I am playing on one of the normal or hard difficulties. Not really Captain or Admiral like I am in my other playthrough. But he was pretty easy to deal with regardless than any of the other ones. So you just spray him with the assault rifle. And after you kill him, he drops five or six weapon parts. Then you go to where these shuttered doors are, and that's essentially where the end of the level is. And that's the first level completed right there. Starting off with level two called Utility, you have to go to this crouching vent area, and there'll be a key card that's currently through a crack. You can shoot through the crack to break that module that's next to the door to open it, and that will allow you to get the blue key card as well as see the preview to what the next enemy you're going to be fighting, which is the drone or Minecrawler Mark II, which essentially just jumps at you and blows up. When you go through the blue door, there's going to be this really big section we're going to have to talk about step by step, and this is the server room. The server room or the data center is essentially this big area where you have to blow open these holes that are marked with a cross slash circle around it, and you'll see it. It's pretty big anyway, but essentially you're stacking barrels on top of each other to get on top of this big server that's bouncing around. And up here, you'll be able to get a yellow canister and a propane tank. Once you get up your tower of barrels that you built and go on top of the server and walk across there, you drop the two barrels on the ground, or just the one which is the yellow that's needed, and then you go to the first X that's over here. Once it locks in place, you press the button, and then it'll detonate, and then you can go inside and get a data pad, as well as get two more canisters that you need to blow open, some more holes in the wall that are currently on these second floor areas. So once you do this, you press the button to initiate the servers to go up and down so you can get on top of them, and then you can press the button, as you've seen there on the wall, to initiate the canisters to unlock. And they'll be able to give you two of them, and I'll show you where to go after that. Now, you can move them if you want to, but you don't necessarily need them because you have to go to this next area that's inside of a small, like, vent or a hole in the wall. And you have to slide through so you can get over to it farther. But there'll be a doorway, and then there'll be three servers. When activated using a button that's currently by this door over here, essentially they'll pop up and allow you to walk across so you can get on top of a platform to initiate the elevator and the ladder to go down so that you can get up there easier. You'll be in a small room that's got a button that you can press that will initiate the servers, as you see here. And then it'll be one that is delayed before you have to get on top of it and then walk across it. Before you jump on top of the servers though, go into this small room that's got a green door and then when you activate the lever it'll be the main lobby because you're gonna have to take the canisters in here to blow up some walls that have like the marker on it. 
So going back to that second room that had the weird servers that are delayed, you're going to have to go and activate this once again. And when you do that, you're going to have to wait for this one to pop up. Once that goes up, you could jump or you could slide across like I do to get on the other side. And you'll press this button that will initiate the ladders to go down. And then you can get to the elevator that's currently the thing that will allow you to bring the canister up to blow up that wall that needs to be blown up. But you have to press the button here first in order for the elevator to go down. Now, it is timed. So be mindful when you go and mess around with the elevator because, again, being timed, it's not going to be very long. I'd say maybe about 10, 15 seconds, maybe not even that. But you get the first canister through the room and going past the door that you unlocked earlier through the lever, you can go over here and put the first canister up on the second floor of that wall. So once you bring the canister with you, you put it on top of the elevator, you grab it, and you put it right there on the wall. You initiate it by running away, because if you do stand near it, you will die or you will get hurt very badly. When the wall is destroyed, you walk through it, and this will be another area called the server management. And this will be the area to where you have to press a button to initiate a bridge to go down so that you can hit the next canister and put it on the main lobby wall that you seen earlier and that's what allows you to walk across to blow it up so as you see here you get some med kits and you come to this like hand and then across there it'll grab the bridge and bring it down and we have to go to the main lobby to blow up the last wall so after running back here and sliding through we grab the last canister we walk across this bridge that we initiated earlier even though it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes to get on top of the staircase Bring it over to this last wall, put it on the ground and detonate it, and then we're ready to continue on to the next level. Once that cancer blows up, you'll go down a small kind of dark hallway, and this will be to the faculty maintenance area. And you'll have to unlock this just in case you need to backtrack or get back to Gwyn, which is the vending machine that allows you to get med kits and heal. And then you can come up this ladder, and then once you go up the ladder there, I think it's to the next mission. Once you go all the way up the ladder here, you're going to go to this door that you kick in, and this will be the next area called the rooftops. You're going to have to deal with some enemy units on the right-hand side, as well as some drones that are currently flying and shooting machine guns at you. After you kill everybody on the rooftops, you go here on the right-hand side of the level, and this will be a doorway that you can walk through, and you have to deal with the landmine. Now, they are bulletproof. You can't really shoot them or blow them out with a grenade. So what you do is you take an item, like a chair or a mug, and you could disable it or blow it up. As you see here with a med kit that a mine is currently guarding, I throw a mug at it and I do a double take because I did not know that it disabled it and not blew it up. But I wanted to end this here for this specific walkthrough of part one. I'll be doing utility 2-1 and some of the other stuff after this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later in the next one.